Hi and welcome to another Postgres tutorial and in this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create an instance of Postgres on Amazon Web Services and connecting to it from your machine. So if you already have an Amazon account you can just sign in straight away. If you don't you can create here uh, an Amazon account for free which will give you 12 months access. Uh, it's restricted but it's still let lets you in and you can do things like this. So I'll just enter my password, get going. Yeah, once connected, if you look at databases on the left hand column, depending on your screen res, if you click on RDS and on the left, if you find the word instances, you click there. You see these are the instances I have listed. Currently I have none. So if I click launch DB instance, and here I want to select Postgres. Yeah, I don't want production because I'm doing this for free. I want the dev test environment. And then here you will have your database options. There is a tick box here, which is great if you just want to do this for development and test purposes. If you tick this, it will select all your options that are free. So at the moment you can see here, the license model is Postgres, the engine is 9.5. Uh, I don't think this has been upgraded yet, uh, currently it's 9.6. Again, you can see there are many options here, but it's defaulted to just the one. So we'll just we'll keep these as they are. The instance identifier, this is what you will call your instance. I will just name it Postgres underscore instance and the master username I will just call AWS Postgres and the password I will use as my default password must only contain letters, digits or hyphens so yeah, I will change that there again these options if you leave these options here they will be the free, free default options but you are free to choose new options as and when they are available to you. So database name I will just call Postgres. The port again defaults, these are all default options. These are default options on all installs of Postgres. Again Postgres backup monitoring and if you click launch your instance at the bottom and then there your instance is being created. And You have the option here to view your DB instances if you click there you'll see here it's not available yet. This might take a few minutes, it might take several minutes it just depends on availability. So if, if you just keep refreshing this as soon as it becomes available uh, you can move on to the next step which is actually connecting to it. And there you go and you'll see that eventually um, your instance will be live and it will be available. <coughs> so what you need to do then next is if you open your copy of PG Admin and on the left here you have your original Postgres server. If here if I click is quick link add new server if I just click there and I call this enter a name uh, it's my Amazon one connection host name address um, this normally would be your IP number or IP address or your DNS name but so here what you do is you get your endpoint as listed here as shown on your instance manager you can see there is an endpoint address this is actually where you are connecting to if you put that into there however if you exclude the port number at the end because you have this separately here uh, okay they maintenance the database is Postgres. The username is the username that I created at the time. Um, if you click here and go instance actions and you select see details. Here if you forgot and you're doing it in a hurry, you can see here the username I created was AWS underscore Postgres. I'll enter that in here. And my password is what I always use. I pre-checked save. And there you go. You'll see here on your left your connections you'll have your default public schema 
And that is your live connection to your AWS Postgres. If you go back here to your instance monitor and you click refresh, you'll see here there is one connection. And that is the connection you've just made with your PG admin for. And there you go. And that is a quick tutorial on how you set up Postgres for your AWS or in your Amazon Web Services.